Welcome to Cook 30 for Kids. I'm Chef Jeremy Dixon from the Revive Cafes in Auckland, New Zealand. And today I'm going to share with you how you can make beautiful, delicious food in your very own home kitchen. Today we have two very special guests with us. Welcome to Toby from Chicago and Angeli from Arkansas. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Yeah. All right, so um, firstly we'll get to know these guys before we start. So Toby, um, just a, a surprise question for you. So what's your favourite thing to cook at home? Um, I really enjoy making pancakes in the morning. Pancakes Just, in the morning? Yeah. And do you cook them for all your family? Yeah, I do. Oh, fantastic. And Toby lives in Chicago now, but he actually used to live in New Zealand, in Auckland, where I come from. But uh, they went to move to America. So do, what do you prefer, America or New Zealand? Well, I didn't really know New Zealand that well because I was so young, but yeah, I guess, I guess America. Okay, that's great. And welcome, Anjali. And so, um, what's your favorite food to cook? Well, I'm originally from India, so well. I cook a lot of curries at home. So, maybe um, just different kinds, you know, like with vegetables and things yes. in there. Yeah, just different flavors. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> um, and another question for you. So, when you get to heaven, what's the first thing you're going to do? Go to Jesus. I Go to, to Jesus. Talk to him. And, Fantastic. You know, and you, know, Toby? I'll probably just run around and. Yeah, say hi to animals and stuff like that. Yes, animals. It's going to be great when we can actually pet lions and things like that, isn't it? So yeah. that's great. Well, thanks for coming, guys, on Cook 30 for Kids. We're going to cook up a storm today. So what is on the menu? Well, on the menu, we have basil pesto, fusilli pasta mango with some Asian sesame greens. That sounds really good. And for dessert, we have macadamia peach smoothie, which sounds pretty good, in my opinion. Okay, before we get cooking, there's something very important we do, and in the restaurant land, it's called prep. Mm -hmm. And that is you can't just turn up at your kitchen and, f and just get cooking straight away. You want to be a little bit organised, and it's very, very important. So we've got a clean surface here, pots on the stove, we've got boiling water in the jug, we've got all our ingredients out, and we're ready to go. You ready to start cooking? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So we're doing a um, pasta dish today. Do you guys like pasta? Yeah, yes. I love pasta. Excellent, <laughs> everyone likes pasta. So we better get that cooking because that's probably going to be one of the things that's going to take the longest. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to turn the gas on here. So if you can grab that, that pasta there, Toby, and um, open it up. Now this is um, fusilli pasta. And fusilli, with, with pastas, they pretty much describe them by the shape. So pasta's all the same stuff. You get linguine, spaghetti, fusilli, penne. It's just the shape of them. And fusilli is really nice because, it's, as you can see, it's got this really nice kind of spiral shape. Mm -hmm. And it just makes a really nice texture when you're eating it to have this lovely spiral. So that's what we're using today. So um, to cook pasta, basically you need boiling water. So if I can get you to grab the boiling water from the jug there, Angelie, and pour it in here, you need lots and lots of water okay. when you're doing pasta. Um, generally pasta, oh no the other oh, one, okay. this one here, yeah. this is the one we're going to use. So fill that up and we're going to put in um, three cups of that. So I'll get you to get a measuring cup for you Toby, oh there you go. So if you can put in three cups of pasta. Should this be enough? No, go, go put it all okay. in. The so pasta likes lots of water. I've never seen a measuring cup this shape. <laughs> <laughs> if you pour it over there, that way you're going to, um, if it, it's going to fall, it's going to fall in the pot, so which is not a big deal, so that's great. So this is, uh, generally takes around about 8 to 12 minutes depending on the pasta and just look at your packet directions um, so you can tell how long it's going to take. Now one very important thing about this pasta is, actually make it four, okay. looks a little bit light there, is this pasta is wholemeal, so it's made with whole wheat flour rather than processed white flour. So when you get it, most supermarkets have it. Oh, where should I put this? Yeah, just put it on the counter over there. Okay. Um, yeah, so whole wheat flour is really important to use because it's, it's much healthier for you. It's got all the vitamins and minerals and lots of fibre. So, oh, drop something already. Whoop, there we go. So we're underway the pasta, so give it a bit of a shake. And um, we'll come back to that in about 8, minute, in about, um, eight to 12 minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so first job is done. So next job we're going to do, we're going to start making a, um, a re some really nice pan-fried vegetables to go with this pasta. That sounds good. <laughs> so we've got this lovely pasta, we're going to make a lovely basil pesto and some beautiful um, kind of, you know, Mediterranean vegetables. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll get you guys chopping. So perhaps Toby I can get you to start chopping. Okay. So we're going to just um, chop basically some bell peppers. I call these capsicum where I come from. And just basically pull out the seeds. And then what we're going to do is we want to chop them into lovely little kind of cubes. 
So kind of just that kind of a that kind of a shape, just kind of nice little bite. So if you can kind of chop that, okay. and if you can do the orange one and the yellow as well, mm -hmm. that'd be brilliant. And I'll get you. We'll just turn the gas on for this one okay. here on the pan. And if you can add a little bit of oil, so probably add about um, a tablespoon of oil. Okay. And we're just going to pan fry these. So we want to cook them so they're just a little bit nice and soft, but not just a little bit crunchy. Do I cut this one in half? Or do I yep. So just yeah. So good question. So just kind of cut it like that. And if you're clever, you can actually kind of cut through there like that as well. So you can kind of cut multiple ones at a time. So is this enough or a little bit more? That's probably about right. So it's okay. about a tablespoon. Do we like, you know, yep, spread yep, it out? Yep. Give it a bit of a spread out, and then. Uh, as, as Toby keeps cutting, if you can throw all the vegetables into the pan, that would be great. Sure. So we'll get this underway. Um, what else are we going to cut? We're going to use some, use some garlic. So I've got a garlic chopper here. Actually, Angela, if you can put the garlic in. So if you can okay. just put the garlic in there, mm -hmm. and just give it a really, really good squeeze, and push that in the, um, in right the pan here. there. Yep. Give it a go. Skin and all. Push harder. Yeah, <laughs> yeah go, go. Yes, wow. you need to get it. Yeah, nearly. I Do you really I'll give you a strong. hand there. There's a big piece of garlic. There you go. Look at that. Cool. And we'll just um, yeah. grab a thing over here to um, just get it all in. Mm -hmm. So if you can just stir that round in the oil so it doesn't burn. And you can kind of grab these vegetables here as you go if you like. How's it going with the with the with the, the bell pepper here? Good. Good. That's great. You, uh, what do you do with this piece? Is this good? So you just these bits in the middle, just kind of just grab them out and just just put them on the side. So just kind okay. of grab them like that. I, I try to get rid of most of the seeds, but a few few seeds go, and it's not um, it doesn't it's not too bad. So keep chopping those. It smells good. It smells great. Can you hear that sizzle? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. There's nothing like that sizzle when you first start cooking it, and you know that things are underway when you hear everything sizzling like that. It just it's really beautiful. So we're getting those underway. Um, we also need some, so we'll get those chopping, and then after that we're going to do some courgette. Actually, um, um, Angela, I want you to chop this. Okay. You good with using knives? Yeah. Here's another knife here. So, so with this one here, we're just going to do what we call a, um, a cross cut. Mm -hmm. So you guys can share the board. Does this mm -hmm. stay on here? Um, it can do. Yeah, that's fine. Rip okay. it off if you can, but it's it's fine. So basically, you take the ends off like this. Mm -hmm. And you, this is one of my favourite cuts, it's called a cross cut, and you slice it down the middle mm -hmm. and get rid of these guys here. And what you do is we just cut it alternating directions like that. Oh. And it just kind of gives a really nice kind of interesting random texture. So if you can do that, try to keep them sure. smaller, no bigger than that, because okay. you want kind of bite-sized pieces. Uh -huh. You don't want to be giving people big, big chunks of stuff they kind of can't put <laughs> in their mouth. So just little bite-sized pieces like that. So if you can chop okay. through those, that'd be great. So we've got this pan here, it's just going to start cooking everything beautifully. Whoops. One things are jumping out here. Should I put the orange capsicum on? Yes, yes, throw those in the pot. So we've got red, orange and yellow. So one of the biggest principles of colour, if there's anything you can remember about today, or about cooking, actually there's lots of things, but one thing, and that is colour. Food that looks good always has lots of colours. So we've got red, orange, yellow, and um, we're going to add some green later, so it's just everything Look at that, beautiful cutting. Everything is about colour. So when you ever got a dish and you're kind of looking at it and going, hmm, that just looks a little bit boring, a little bit brown, a little bit yellow, just add some colour. Just think of an ingredient or a vegetable or a herb that you can put on to add some colour and it will transform it. Do I need to add this in there? Just add it straight in. Okay. And the yellow one as well, Toby. Oh, okay. I'll just get this on there. Yep, cool. Brilliant. Looking amazing. Thank you. These are lovely Mediterranean vegetables. Look at that. Probably a little bit bigger than that. Okay. You kind of want kind of more cubey than kind of slicey, but that's great. And there's actually probably about 20 different ways you can chop a vegetable. So when you're next in the kitchen, make sure you experiment and um, and chop things in different ways. Put I've never. Bigger. I've, a bit bigger. I've never heard of this kind of cut before. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite good, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And this goes well. I'll give it a bit of a shake up. So what's your favourite curry to make? Well, I have to say maybe some okra. Okra? okra? Yeah. Look at okra here, look at that. Oh. <laughs> Did you see that? Yeah. Great, so we've got some okra in the, in the salad today. Brilliant. And this will take around about probably, probably five, seven minutes to cook. And you just want it so it's just cooked through and it's cooked. And it's a little bit soft, but you still want to remain that crunchiness. Um, so a lot of people overcook their vegetables and you end up with very, very, you know, sloppy, very kind of, everything gets cooked out of it. And the colour goes and the flavour goes. So, um, Brilliant, you guys are making great time here. It's 
fun um, to cook in the kitchen. That's that's great fun. So when you cook, how does the well, how does the coil leave it if you cook it too much? Like what happens? It, it just goes very soft. The colours go out of it, and the flavours kind of the flavours intensify. But for this kind of a dish, you want to make sure you got a little bit of crunch there. Yeah. Great question. Brilliant. Should so, we stir it up? Yep. So if you, you can be in charge okay. of um, just keeping it stirred. You don't. You want everything to cook evenly. You don't want anything to burn. Um, we've got it on high heat, so it goes quickly. So that's underway and doing excellently. So we're going to make our uh, what should we do next? We're going to make a salad. So we've got a lovely, lovely salad, and this is the easiest salad to make in the world. Um, Toby, if you can grab that wooden bowl off the table. Sure. And this salad is going to use one of my favourite ingredients, first ingredient, and that is this. Do you guys know what this is? Uh, is it? Well, I don't know. Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it before. It's yeah, an Asian so vegetable, I... and it's oh. called uh, bok choy. Yes, you got yeah, it. Bok choy, choy. well yeah. done. So bok choy, it's spelled bok choy, but I think it's actually pronounced pok choy. Pok it's a Chinese yeah. vegetable. And you've probably seen it in the supermarket and go, oh, that looks really boring. But this is the most crispiest, crunchy vegetable you can find. I mean, try a little bit of this. See how crunchy this is. Try that. Here, try that. Mm. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really crunchy. Yep. Got the taste? Yeah. Cool, OK. It's a little bit different, but with some, some interesting veg, um, stuff on it, we're gonna, it's going to taste amazing. So we're just going to rip off any kind of leaves that are kind of have, have been kind of damaged. And whoops, that one's a little bit brown. How so can you tell if it's been damaged? I'll see there's like a little, there's kind of a few brown bits here. So some of it, it gets damaged very easily. So if there's any brown or bruising, just look out for it. So we're just going to slice it through. Because it's got fibres that are going through the leaf like that, it's going to be very, very stringy and very, very hard to eat if you eat it. Because it's going to, you know, when you do something that's very stringy, like celery. Yeah. So with this and celery, it's like celery, you need to cut through those fibres and it makes it a hundred times more enjoyable to eat. So just going to cut it through like that and put it into this lovely wooden bowl. So Toby, you can you can chop all those up like that. Okay. Just um, slice the end off, we don't want the end. And this is a really lovely, crispy, fresh salad. What we're going to do, so it's that ingredient there. So is um, this a bad part? Do you yep, just... yeah, so just rip that off, just rip the leaf off. That's great. Quality control is always really important. So if you can chop through those, It'd be great. Um, what else goes in the salad? We've also got another ingredient, and that is okra. And someone came today and said, we'd like some okra for the recipe today. Seth, one of our cameramen, found some okra in his garden. And it is just, look at that, little, look at these little things. You guys use okra before? You use okra yeah. in Indian cooking. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just a really nice vegetable. Normally it's cooked, but I see most people actually walking around eating this raw. It is really, really nice. Mm. It's a little bit slimy inside, but we're going to cut it into pieces so you won't notice that as much. This is the next vegetable we're putting in. So all we're going to do with this okra is just cut it. I'll just do it here so you can see. Cut it into um, diagonally into little wee pieces. So we're going to take, make sure the ends come off okay. and just cut it like that. And this just adds another dimension to this lovely salad. So this salad's just got green things in it. Normally I'd just have the, um, the, the pot choy, but it's actually quite nice to throw some okra or something else in, just to get a bit of, get a bit of interest. And one of the things you want to learn to develop when you're, when you're cooking is, when you walk around the supermarket, look for what's in there that looks good. Because things are in season sometimes. When things are in season, when they're being grown, they taste good, and they're normally heaps, heaps cheaper. So you want to be looking for in-season vegetables. So how do you know when this is done? Um, good question. So it's getting pretty close, I think. As, as you can tell, it's kind of, it's probably a little bit hard there, so you can tell it's still hard. Okay. You want to just be kind of just softening up a little bit. Okay. So I'd say probably another couple of minutes. Okay. Good chopping there. Um, and to make this, this, this salad really yummy, we're going to add some lovely flavours now. We're going to add some, oh, here they are over here. We're going to add some sesame oil. And this is a lovely Asian kind of oil to have. And it just has a beautiful, beautiful flavour. That's why we kind of got sesame in there. So about a tablespoon of that. You don't need much at all. It's a very strong flavour. We're going to add some honey, and this adds lovely sweetness. Honey's my favourite sweetener. You could also use agave or um, some other kind of a healthy sweetener. And we're going to put some sesame seeds in as well. We've got some white sesame seeds. Just give them a bit of a bit of a thrill on there. And some. Black sesame seeds. If you can find black sesame seeds, they're a lovely garnish. Look at this, this lovely colour they give to this, this 
and it kind of, you know it's an Asian salad when you come out with sesame seeds. So it's a really great combination. And just to finish it off, I'm just going to put a drizzle of lime juice. You can use lemon juice if you want, just to add a little bit of tartness to kind of match off against that the sweet honey. And um, this is a salad we have in my cafes and I make occasionally for people and people look at this and go it looks boring but it actually tastes really, really, really yummy. So we've got all that in there, we're just going to give it a bit of a mix around to get all the ingredients kind of coated. And then generally once you've done that you want to then add another, just add another, another squiggle of honey to make it look good and another topping of sesame seeds. And how no, easy is that salad? The salad? Sorry? I've never seen the honey in a salad. Exactly, but yeah. when you try Neither it, you'll like it. <laughs> it's really nice. A few more black sesame seeds just to make it whoop, look beautiful. And there you go. And we'll just the lime, we'll just put a few lime wedges on just to make it look beautiful. We'll just cut this up. Just put them on the side if someone else wants something there. So as you can see, with garnish, you want to lift things up and let it drop down. And I uh, put some lime wedges in, some garnish on top. Doesn't it look great? Yeah, yeah. it just looks so easy to make. Exactly. And it's actually really fun. And it's just a nice, it's lovely, just lovely little fresh salad to go with it, and it's so, so easy. So that is done. If you've just joined us on Cook 30 for Kids, we are cooking up a storm in the kitchen with Toby from Chicago and Angeli from Arkansas. Guys, what's on the menu today? We're cooking basil pesto with fusilli pasta mango with some Asian sesame greens. And for dessert, we have the delicious macadamia peach smoothie. Mmm, -mm. this is going to be good. good. So we've made an excellent start. We've done the salad. The vegetable's nearly done. The pasta's probably nearly done. We'd better check on that. Let's have a little look. So when you want to check how pasta's done, there's something that the Italians use, a word they use called al dente. And al dente means firm to the bite. Okay. So when you bite it, it want, you want it to be firm. If you can oops, try a little bit of this, it might be hot. Thank you. Try, I'll get you guys to try a bit. Okay. It, hope it doesn't burn your hand. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little slip off. Just, just bite into it. And is it is it firm? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's firm? Mm -hmm. Did it feel like it was undercooked? Yeah, it looked a little bit. Mm. A little bit. Yep, yeah, so it's probably just about ready. So it's firm to the bite, but you kind of it's not crunchy. That's okay. the main thing. It doesn't kind of crunch. It's actually pleasant to eat. Also with pasta, this will keep cooking after we take it out. Mm -hmm. So we want to basically, you kind of want to, if anything, undercook your pasta just a little bit. Because mm -hmm. even when we've drained it, it'll keep cooking. So we'll, we'll actually drain this now. So okay. we'll just turn the gas off. And Toby, if you want to grab a tea towel from over there. And I'll get you to, um, I'll get you just to drain it. We've got a colander here. So these colanders are really useful to drain things. So just, yeah, put it through there. That's great. Um, drain all the water out and that's ready to, ready to go. Here we go, look at that. So we want this to be a warm, it's kind of like a warm, a warm meal. So that pasta is there and it's cooked and it's kind of, you know, ready, ready to use in our salad. So that job is done and we're going to just put it over here out of the way and it's ready to throw in when this is ready. So the next job is we want to make a little bit of basil pesto. You guys like basil pesto? Yeah. So we're just going to throw some ingredients in the blender. You can probably turn it, I think it's done now. You can see it's okay. nice and squishy, yeah. which is great. So we'll just um, turn it off. That's great. And eventually, if you can get that big white platter from the, um, the table sure. and, and put it on the front of the stove there. So we're just going to add some ingredients into here to make some basil pesto. So, what's this? Basil. Basil, yep. Basil. Well, you guys say basil. Yeah. We say basil where I come from. So this is just a most amazing fragrant herb. So we're just going to add some, ba um, some basil and we're just going to grab this. And this is about probably two cups worth and we're going to put it in the blender like that. So where do we put this? Wait, I'll just put it over here. And okay. we can throw everything in shortly. There's a basil leaf there. <laughs> um, got some basil. Now what else goes in basil pieces? We're going to add some cashew nuts. So Toby, you can um, measure out one cup of... Um, see if you can find, I'll find a measuring cup. Oh, I got it. Okay. Here we go. You got it? Brilliant. Yeah. Measure out one cup of, of uh, basil. Um, you can measure out two tablespoons of um, olive oil. Just, okay. just estimate it should be fine. Okay. See if you can estimate two tablespoons of that. Okay. Um, we're going put to it add, in here? Yep, yeah, put it in there. That's great. Um, so this is one of those kind of recipes where we're just adding lots of different flavours into the blender. Is this enough? Yep, that, a bit more I think. Okay. So when you buy basil from the supermarket, it's generally full of huge amounts of oil and lots of palms and cheese, but that's probably about enough. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to put in four tablespoons of lemon juice. Now you're a big strong lad, so I want you to squeeze this through your fingers, squeeze these lemons through your fingers, so we end up with about four tablespoons of lemon juice. So just squeeze it into there. 
just put it just like yep squeeze it through your fingers it's just a quick way of doing lemon juice which is really good it's great um, we're going to need a little bit of water so I'll just get some water here and uh, Angela if you can measure in half a teaspoon of salt there's a half okay. teaspoon measure there put it in there and I'll just double check my recipe oh we need to add a clove of garlic do you so, put this in right here yep put it in just like that and this is this is the pesto that we're going to be basically using to drizzle on our pasta and our vegetables we've just made where do we put this um, just goes over here just put it over here by the blender okay that's great throw in the beer and um, basically yep yep there should be enough okay and then we'll just put it on here and Toby if you can push the go button and uh, push the high button and we'll blend it There we go, look at that, our own basil pesto. How does that look? That looks good. good. <laughs> okay, so we better get this on. So if you want to, um, Toby, pour the pasta on there, on that bar, on that, okay. on this dish. And if you can throw the vegetables on the pasta. Sure. Oh, cashew out. Mmm. <laughs> there we go. Cool. Cool, bring it over here so you can reach. Just spread the, um... I'm going to mix it round so it doesn't matter. I'll just uh, get, get the pan okay. and tip it on. That'd be great. Well, Toby, if you can um, extract that from there and put that on there. And then we'll give a quick mix around shortly. Look at that. So those three ingredients, the pasta, that pesto you know is going to taste good, and those lovely roasted vegetables. And I'll show you how to mix it. So when we mix it, yep, that should be uh, enough for now, I think. So when you kind of stir things together, you kind of want to make, you want to lift things and let it kind of fall. You don't want to kind of push it down, just kind of give it a bit of a mix around like that. So that, that pesto should start to, um, so actually if you want to start just mixing okay. that, just use that spoon, just kind of mix it around, lift it up, and it will eventually start coming together. Now while you're doing that, Toby, we're going to make, better make the smoothie. We're getting short on time here. So we've got another fresh blender, which is great. And we're going to add some ingredients into here. So if you can get some macadamia milk out of the fridge. Okay. That's great. So this is a macadamia peach smoothie, and macadamia is a really nice milk. You can get, you can get macadamia milk now, believe it or not. So um, this is a really lovely, lovely milk you can get instead of, instead of cashew milk or almond milk. So if you can pour in um, one cup of that, whoops, I've got water in there. Okay. Let's empty that. We'll pour one cup of um, macadamia milk. We're also going to add some macadamia nuts as well. So we've got some macadamia nuts. It's a lot of macadamia. <laughs> so it's all about macadamia, this. And we're going to add in half a packet, so it's probably about half a cup of, probably a quarter of a cup of macadamias in there. And if you can go in the freezer, the one on the left, there should be some peaches there as well. So adding peaches is a really nice smooth ingredient. So you can get frozen peaches. If you can't find frozen, frozen peaches, then you want to just, you can freeze your own. You get some canned peaches or some fresh peaches, put them in the freezer. But having things frozen gives a really nice texture. So a little perforation on the front. Oh, I'm just pour them over like that. Well, there was. Is this, <laughs> is this well mixed or do I mix it well That's mixed? perfect. I'll come back to that shortly. So we're going to throw all those in there. So about two cups in there. Straight. We're also going to throw in a banana, which will give it lovely sweetness. And I think we might need some more macadamia milk. We might go with two cups of macadamia milk because that's probably not going to blend. So if you want to throw another cup in. All right. And this is going to be a lovely sweet. Now, peach is a very subtle flavour, so we don't want to add too much things like maple syrup to it because it really overpowers it. That looks really good. It looks good, eh? And then we'll push the go button and see how it goes. Nice just add a bit more milk to that and get it going again, probably in another cup. Okay. Now I'll come back to this, so that's looking great. So when you're stirring, that looks really good. It's lovely and mixy, isn't it? It's a lovely blend. You want to kind of let it go naturally. You want things to kind of have height like that. Okay. There we go. And, we'll, and what, to finish later, um, in the break, we'll cut, chop some tomatoes up as well okay. and drizzle some more basil pesto over and some fresh basil to make okay. it look really beautiful. Yep, press the go button. Okay. And that smoothie's nearly finished. Here it goes. You still need to add a bit more moisture to make it go. Just hop with it. Whoa! <laughs> Here we go. 
And look at that lovely, thick smooth. It's got peaches wow. and macadamia nuts. So we'll put that in a lovely glass and garnish it. And it's pretty much a meal done. Mmm. This pasta is really good. Oh, delicious. Mm. It's really good. So what we did in the break, we cut up some tomatoes, chopped some avocado, another drizzle of pesto, some fresh basil mm. and some beans, and that just makes us look and taste mm. really, really good. And this fresh salad here, you guys have got to try this one. This is okay. just the freshest salad that you will have ever tasted in your life. It's just so easy and so quick. So make sure you try these lovely Asian mm. vegetables in the bok oh, choy. You really taste the bok choy here. Yes, really yeah, it's really nice, isn't it? Have you guys had fun today? Yes. Yeah. What did you really? guys learn? What did you like learn? We learned how to cook. Exactly. <laughs> In just 30 minutes. Isn't that fantastic? Yeah. 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 It great. was awesome. And the smoothie. Do you want to try the smoothie? Mm -hmm. And these, um, the peaches can sometimes be a little bit tart, so you may need to add some sweetener, but this just, mmm, just tastes amazing too. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for joining us today. We look forward to having you next time on Cook 30 for Kids. Woohoo! Whoa.